Hello everyone, my name is Wade Bradford. Welcome back to my channel. There is a pencil in my ear. That means it is time for us to analyze literature. Today we are talking about a story called Uncle Ben's Choice. It is written by Chinua Achebe. If I'm saying his name correctly, I've been trying to say it correctly. And let's get to it. First of all, if you haven't read the story, you'll want to read it, I think, because I'm spoiling stuff for you. So you'll see some links down below so that you can read the text on your own or you can listen to it. I found a good audio file for you. And for those of you still watching, what I'd like to do is just talk about what I think this story means and what I like about it and maybe what you could write an essay about. You know, just in case there's an English teacher out there who forced you to read this story and you have no idea what to do with it. The author Chinua Achebe was born in 1930. He died in 2013. His most famous work is the novel Things Fall Apart. That novel and stories like Uncle Ben's Choice show these conflicts that occur within the setting of British colonial Nigeria. But a key difference between Things Fall Apart and Uncle Ben's Choice is that Uncle Ben kind of likes aspects of the British Empire. He's in a club where he plays tennis and billiards against the European club. He's a very social guy. He's got a lot of lady friends. He likes to go out and party. And he's a clerk working for the Niger Company, uh, which is a mercantile business. And it seems at the beginning he's feeling pretty good about it because he's, he's making two pounds ten. Now he says, hey, you laugh and you think that's not very much money, but but it is back then. When is back then? This story is published in 1966, but Uncle Ben, who is our narrator, is letting us know at the very beginning that this is the year 1919. So like I said, our narrator Uncle Ben is kind of a ladies man, and he likes to make sure that the women he finds attractive don't follow him back to his house. So one of the things that he values is his independence. And he feels like, oh, if I let any woman who likes me follow me home, then they're gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get attached to them, they're gonna get attached to me, uh, I'm gonna keep things at a distance. There is one lady named Margaret that finds out where he lives, and so it seems like he's kind of sweet on her and has made an exception of the rule. Oh, and he's also got a cool bicycle that he rides around town. He likes, he likes that. So, so this guy, Ben, he's loving life. He's having a good time. So you're probably wondering, what is the conflict? Well, before we get to the conflict, we have to ask ourselves, do we trust this narrator? Unreliable narrators in stories are narrators that say one thing, but maybe they mean something else. Maybe they're being sarcastic or ironic. Maybe they are lying to us. Maybe they are naive uh, and don't understand things. Or maybe they are kind of fooling themselves and therefore sometimes fooling the reader. Now the reason why I bring this up is because something happens in this story and I don't really know what it is. I'm not exactly sure how we should interpret it. And that makes this story very fun to analyze because it's wide open for interpretations. So in this part of the story, he says to his audience, it was New Year's Eve like this. And by the way, I think when he's talking to the reader, uh, we can imagine that he's talking to maybe friends at a bar, probably younger men at a bar, and he's socializing with them. And so when he's talking about 1919, this is probably decades ago. So it's probably sometime during the you know 1950s and the 1960s, and now he's talking about his life long ago. So it's New Year's Eve, Ben has been partying, he's stayed up till 3 o'clock in the morning, and he's been drinking white horse scotch. Now he says this, he says, what was I saying? Yes, I drank a bottle of white horse and put one roasted chicken on top of it. Drunk? It is not in my dictionary. I have never been drunk in my life. Now, do we believe that, that he can drink a whole bottle of scotch and not be drunk, be within his faculties. I don't exactly trust him. Now that might be based upon my own preconceptions. I have had relatives in the past that if they drank half a bottle of scotch and they said, hey, I'm fine, give me the car keys. I would be like, no, no, you're not fine. I'm not getting in the car with you. So just because someone claims that they are not drunk or they've never been drunk, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should trust him. So let's, let's go further into the story. So he takes his bicycle home to his place, to his home. 
So it says at his house, he had two rooms on one side of it and the storekeeper had two rooms on the other side, but as luck would have it, this man was on leave, so his side was vacant. I opened the front door and went inside. Then I locked it again. I left my bicycle in the first room and went into the bedroom. I was too tired to begin to look for a lamp. So he gets into bed and there is a woman in the bed and she does not have any clothes on. He assumes that it's Margaret, his one of his girlfriends, and uh, you know, is basically happy to see her. But this woman is quiet. She's not saying anything to him. And then Ben starts to notice that she feels different, right? Her hair does not feel like Margaret's hair. It feels like the hair of a European woman. So that freaks him out. He wants to know who this woman is. She doesn't want to give any answers. So he gets out of bed and says, hey, I'm going to light this match. And she says in the Igbo language, and I'm going to pronounce this terribly incorrect, so I, I, I apologize. Biko uh, Akpakwana Oku. Again, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, but I, I'm going to put the words up here. So she says that. Now I went to Google Translate. Not that that's the best place to find anything out that's going to be official, but I found some interesting things about this phrase and translated according to Google, it can mean uh, please be careful. It can mean please don't call or cry out. But that, that last little word, uh, aku, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, according to Google Translate, can mean cry, but it can also mean flame or fire. So I think what this woman is saying is basically, please don't light the match. Please don't alert others by lighting the match. And maybe it's a way of saying, hey, I don't want to show you who I am. So he lights the match because there's something strange going on. This, this woman in his bed, uh, you know, might be some kind of, you know, magical creature or some European woman, and he's going to get into trouble if it's somebody else's wife, you know, so, so he wants to get to the bottom of things, but then it gets very vague. It says he strikes the match, and then the next thing he knows, he's running over to his neighbor's house, and he's banging on the door, and his neighbor Matthew lets him in, and once, once everything's kind of explained, and Matthew's saying, like, what'd she look like? And Ben's saying, like, I, I didn't see her. And so after, you know, days go by and things settle down, Ben kind of absorbs the story, and so does his friend Matthew, that he was visited by a mythical creature known as Mami Wato, and that he was basically given a choice. If he stayed in bed with this mythical creature, he would have become very, very wealthy, but would never have had any children, so would have no family of his own. And so by, by choosing, basically, to, to run away, uh, he has embraced having a family instead of embracing wealth without children. And so at the very end of the story, when he's kind of laughing with his, his multiple wives and his children, and they're saying, ah, oh, you should have you made that choice. Uh, you should have stayed with, with Mami Wata. So when they're laughing at him, he knows that it's a joke. He says, for where is the man who would choose wealth instead of children. So going back to the idea of an unreliable narrator, I'm not sure how I should read this story. Is this a mythical folk tale that set in the early 1900s, so set in a world where the British colonizers are, are changing so many things about Nigerian culture, so is it meant to be a, a little folk story, a mythical event that takes place in this modernized world? Or do we see it as a realistic story that's told by someone who doesn't quite understand what's going on? Someone who does get very drunk and stumbles perhaps into the wrong, you know, apartment or room and gets into bed with just a stranger who's probably even more surprised than he is. Part of me likes to think that he has stumbled into the wrong house or the wrong room, uh, or that there is a, uh, you know, just a fe secret female admirer that has, has decided to sneak into his bed and he has just mistaken her for something that is mythical. 
But then another deeper part of me really likes the idea that no, in this story, even though it's a modernized world in the early 1900s, even though it's a world that that is kind of overrun by the the Christian and colonialist and British values of, of the society that's kind of permeating over Igbo culture, this British empire that is definitely influencing this Nigerian community, yet at the same time, the, the mythos of the Igbo people is still very much alive and relevant and, and has a power of its own. So if I was going to write an essay about the story, and I'm not because I don't have to, but if you have to write an essay about the story and you don't really have a thesis statement, you know, explored yet, or you don't have like a specific writing prompt, I would definitely explore Uncle Ben. I would do a character analysis of Uncle Ben, focusing on whether or not he is a reliable narrator. When you break down the different ways that he could be telling the truth or he could be mistaken, then there's a lot to analyze with this story. So if you're writing an essay about Uncle Ben's Choice, I'd love to know what kind of prompt you have. And if you need any more essay help, I'd love to try to deliver some for you. So feel free to leave a comment. If you're just watching this video because you like this story, I would love to know your opinion of it. Or maybe you're watching this video because you can't stand Uncle Ben's Choice. I'd love to know why you hate it. So thank you very much for watching. I'm going to put the pencil back in my ear and get back to reading. Have a great day.